Rich Planet TV is sponsored by shopholistic.co.uk, bringing you quality detox and natural health products at affordable prices. Welcome back. I'm Richard D. Hall and I'm talking to UFO researcher John Hansen. Now, John, you were wanting to tell me about the Isle of Wight UFO Society. That's correct. Um, some years ago, we came across a copy of, of a UFO log, which is a... Uh, I'll show that it's like a. a Just told you the see camera that? there. You see you, that? Can you see this picture here? Yeah, yeah I can see it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You this was log. produced by uh, members of the Isle of Wight UFO oh. Society. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> and and well, you can see yourself. I mean, there's an opportunity. What? What? Just read a couple of cases off the front. So this is a standard yeah. reporting mm -hmm. form that they would use. That's right. Uh, to report cases. Yeah, and the lady that, uh, that produced that was there was uh, Kath Smith, there was John Feekins, mm -hmm. there was Len Cramper and his wife, and there was also Fred Smith, mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, that's the sort of stuff they produced, and they collated all the uh, sightings. Mm -hmm. And I always remember Kath Smith saying to me right up to her death, will we ever find out what they are, John? Mm. Uh, and sadly, of course, she, she passed away right. about six months ago. But we went to see her, travelled over on the Isle of Wight, and she gave us all of the ufologues. She gave us all of her, her, of her records. And uh, so we owe a debt of gratitude towards Kath Smith, who's right. on the left, and, and this one. Pat Smith is on the right. Okay. Uh, so that's Kath on the left, and, and that's Pat on the right. Um, All right, John. Yeah. Now it's, yeah. this is okay. a, this is typed, obviously, and yeah. there's actually there are drawings in it as well. I'll just uh, hold this up to the camera so people can see. Uh, fascinating stuff. From I think there was about eighty of them, Richard. 1965, 80, 80, 80. 80. So I've got. Let's handle them carefully. Yeah. Uh, so this one here is from. 26th of November 1965, mm. uh, location Wellingborough. Two girls were walking in Wellingborough when they saw two bright orange objects at an elevation of about 40 degrees in the southwest. They appeared like two pencils at an angle to one another. The objects were in view for about two minutes, pulsating but not moving, and finally they just disappeared. Witnesses, Miss Susan Foster, Miss Janet Jackest, both of Wellingborough, both aged 19. Uh, and we've got another one here. 16th of December, 1964. <coughs> Ten people saw a red pear-shaped object hanging stationary in the sky. No sound. After a few moments, the object faded away. That was Mrs. J. Stevenson, Lowfell Gateshead. Mm. Uh, 27th of October, 1965. So we've got, we've got some with drawings here. <coughs> uh, sketch of the object seen by Janet... Uh, Phil Pot, got it right up here. I'll show you the sketch in a second. Witness looked out from her bedroom window and saw what appeared to be a shiny metal object travelling from south to north. The object seemed to be travelling quite steadily at a reasonable speed. It was not spinning but moved sideways. Incident reported in the Andover Advertiser, 1st of October 1965. Witness Miss Janet Phil Pot, and there's a picture of it there. like stereotypical UFO. We've got another, another UFO image at the bottom of this report. So there's several um, mm. actual cases within each of these UFO logs. What, what, what's even more interesting is that we can go right back to, I've got issue one somewhere, but issue two mm -hmm. is the 31st of August, 64, which mm -hmm. is produced by, by the ladies. And that is... is uh, so this is before they've got the nice sort that's, of that's red title. That's before they, they do the, the red yeah. thing on the front. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's absolutely uh, fascinating that they laboured long and hard to produce all this uh, using early... Um, it's, this is all handwritten, and there's a yeah. hand-drawn map here as well on this one. English Channel, Sussex. I'll just show the map on this one. It's just showing the location. Yeah. And finally, on the 21st of August, 64. Um, right. Thank you. 
So again, we've got an image. This is quite similar to um, the guy that we just spoke to on the phone. It's, that, what that's what right. he saw, isn't yeah, it? it? It is actually. What was the guy's name? Nigel Frapple. Nigel Frapple, yeah. Uh, very similar. Again, a handwritten report. Witness saw a silver object, which they describe a flying saucer. Its height is estimated with reference to a, a block of flats at uh, 200 feet. Its estimated size, 3 foot 6 by 3 foot 6, question mark. It rotated very fast, stopped, turned on its side, rotating, leveling itself, moving in the direction of the Hollands, or the Hollies, is that? Uh, no noise, no trail, duration of sighting two minutes, estimated elevation 50 degrees. So there's, just, there's an image there of it, of, it, mm. of it turning on its side through through 50 degrees. And you've got hundreds of these, John. Hundreds. <clears throat> well, I think they produce something like uh, uh, 80 in all. And we, we mentioned about uh, the Tyneside based UFO. Uh, magazine called Orbit. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I get mixed up with Orbis, but it was definitely Orbit. And uh, again, I, I think they did nearly 90 magazines. And uh, I, I mean, with Ufolog, as far as I know, nobody else has got those copies. Um, they, I mean, they do need some uh, restoration. But uh, what an achievement, really, mm -hmm. uh, for, for these people to do all of this. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I mean, it, it's it's so many stories uh, and so many people, and uh, if it isn't preserved, we lose it all. Well, uh, let's just touch on that, John, because right. there are various <coughs> groups who collate and collect UFO sightings. Am I right? You've That's got right, you've yeah. got there's an organization organization called Beams, uh, and there's a, there's another one on the net which is uh, just UFO Sightings. uk. Mm. Beams is run by um, Hillary, Hillary, Hillary Porter, Porter and uh, her husband, is it Ken? It's Ken Parsons. Ken Parsons. Mm. Uh, now, I actually collect UFO sightings. I've been collecting them mm. for about two years now, so I've, I've right. got a mass of information. I get about three or four reports every week. Mm. Really, I need to make a proper database of those. Now, do you think there's a need for a national database system because well, there are I, people I, such as Gary Heseltine who collect mm. sightings, and there's there's local groups like UFOlog in different parts of the country. As people, they were, there's yeah. the Birmingham UFO yeah. group. Uh, they they collect sightings. It all seems to be disjointed. There's no. Well, it's always been. Uh, I mean, over the years, there's been many attempts, uh, particularly in the in the 60s and 70s, when there was a lot of groups. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, there aren't that many groups about mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. and. Um, in an ideal world, it, it, it would be it would be good to have one database. But my experience shows that there are some people out there that do not want to. Uh, they don't want to release those records out for for reasons best known to yeah. themselves. Yeah, uh, th th that's some researchers who collect sightings. They will hoard them. Well, they, they, it's not their possessions, you see. But they, yeah. they, it's like they tend to regard a UFO witnesses a witness as uh, uh, something personally owned by them, which is wrong. Mm -hmm. my, my, and my argument would be that, you see, I, I never wanted to use in my books Mr. and Mrs. X or, mm. or, or somebody with a pseudonym. I think that people, uh, and it's not easy to, you, you know, to, to use the name, but if you haven't got a name, what have you got? And mm -hmm. sometimes people say to me, well, look, this is, uh, they want confidentiality. They, they don't want their names used. So I would say, well, let me, please put me in touch with them and I'll ask them myself and if they don't want the name to be used I'll, I won't use the name mm -hmm. but 99.9% .9 of people uh, it was just a horrendous statistic to use but I'd say 99% of people in 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 our books are named because why the heck not mm -hmm. I mean they uh, quite often, it's bizarrely, they have the courage to stand up and say, look, all we're saying, it's like James, James Salandin has never said, I saw an alien spaceship. Mm. He just uh, told what he saw, uh, uh, and then it, 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 perhaps it's up, it's up, to, uh, up to us, but um, mm -hmm. 
you know, you, you can only do your best with all of this. But in yeah. answer to you, because I tend to go off at tangents, but the, I agree with what you're saying. The, there should the, be a database. The, 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 there's that problem and there's the giggle factor problem. But there's also the problem of, <coughs> um, my opinion, obfuscation from the authorities. Because mm. it, uh, it, it's my view that they get involved in setting up groups or either or start controlling groups in this field because there is there is a, some kind of conspiracy well, I suppose it against would be the this information. To, it would be the way to do it, but I, uh, if you, especially if you want to know who was doing what, but I, I, I mean, I, I don't really, I've no evidence to suggest that, but I do find it very strange that the, uh, some charming gentleman from the AFU archives, I think you might, uh, might have met um, Klaas, uh, Klaas, uh, I can't remember his name, Klaas Van, uh, smashing blokes. They, it's bizarre that they have, uh, uh, they've been cataloguing UFO reports, British and worldwide reports, mm. in their uh, museum, for want of a better word, for many years now, and there is nothing here. There's, I've not, not, I've here. not met, uh, I've not Last met that fan. person. Yeah, he's, he's from the AFU. Right. Yeah, he stayed a couple of him and his friend came over. Um, I, I tell them they, I ex explain to people they come over on pillaging expeditions, right. which they do, uh, um, you know, to pick up magazines. But they're the only people that are doing this. Who else is doing it? There's nobody doing it in this country. Yeah. I mean, there's an awful lot of stuff. You talked about the internet, but the internet is, it, it plays its part. And you've mentioned that specific site. I, you'd be surprised that very, very few sites that I've sent images of the book to and emails have never replied. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, you know, I, but, but uh, there's, there's probably too many sites. Yeah. And a lot of the information is dubious, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's, you a, know, that's that, that, that is yeah. a trouble. You, you, you need some kind of vetting procedure to enter. Some sort of filter. Yeah, yeah. To, to enter information into the database because you don't want it being poisoned by, <clears throat> you know, false reports, etc. which could happen. Uh, it's, well, it's, it's, it, it's, it's a difficult one because there's no public money to run no. either a, an archive or a library or a database of any kind. But, but there should be for something like this because we said earlier this is social history. Mm -hmm. You know, th th these are not a, a, a catalogue of social lunatics or nutcases or people that have had too much to drink. Uh, uh, you know, this is this is important social history. But in my opinion, John, the NSA, the National Security mm -hmm. Agency in the United States, they know a vast amount about UFOs. They would have to. The, the, the information mm -hmm. they have is phenomenal, and they, I think they know pretty much what's going on with well, it. Well, they must do. Must and, and, but they, 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 they certainly don't want public knowledge of it, in my opinion, no. and that's why there's never any money, <coughs> research, etc., put into real sort of um, well, there, there creating a, a proper is. archive for this information as you say everyone's just mm -hmm. keeps their own and keeps it themselves because they know that there's a there's a conspiracy to it I, I actually I, th I genuinely believe that that some researchers cling on to it because they think it's gold dust that they they're going to get the mm -hmm. the golden nugget which proves gives absolute proof mm -hmm. that there's non-human interaction this not uh, happen but it's it's not going to happen because it just isn't. We we've reached a stage now where even the best film in the world is is, is useless. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I because people are going to say that it's it's uh, it's it's photoshopped, it's hoaxed, it's this that. We're on a loser there as such. Um, but all the information that I'm uh, supplying, most of it has taken place before the internet was ever brought into right. into use and. Right. Uh, I do think that genetics could be used to prove some of this. Mm. That's m my own view. Uh, it's something that I'm quite interested in because yeah. this is one of the claims of, of abduction that there are more, more than likely. Yeah, that that, 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 that throughout the family. Yeah. Yeah, I, no doubt. No that doubt. That's no. If, if you look at abduction, if it's occurring, mm. and and I suspect that it is and has been. Uh, I interviewed a guy called Dan Sherman, who mm. who, okay, who yeah. was worked at the NSA in a secret project mm. and they were allegedly collaborating the NSA with mm. some group who did the abduction of his mother yeah. and he, he had an, a genetic adjustment made so uh, and I think that's g generally what the abduction phenomenon is about mm. so you could use genetics to mathematically prove that there's been adjustments made yeah that would be yeah. a you, you couldn't dispute it, it. 
Yeah, if, oh, well, if you, if you, you had, couldn't. But you it, need specific yeah. skills in that. Uh, but yeah, mm. it's something that I'm looking into. But mm -hmm. to get back to your books, John. Right, okay. we're going to talk about one case from Volume Two, which took place in 1962 in Stratford upon Avon. Mm. You're going to tell us about that, John. Right. This the, the gentleman that brought this to to my attention was John uh, Dennis Llewellyn. Uh, he used to, as we said before, used to run the Stratford-upon-Avon UFO Society. And he had a letter uh, from, actually it was Mr. Gordon Honeycomb. For those that don't remember Gordon, he I think he was an ITV presenter back. Do you remember Gordon Honeycomb? The name rings a bell. What, yeah, what he year was a presenter in the 70s. Uh, uh, but he then he went to Australia. But he, he sent a letter, an interesting letter, because it's sometimes... Uh, it's, I mean, I don't know if, it was, if what they saw was a UFO. It could have been a satellite. Mm. But it's an interesting letter because he said that um, uh, in, in July 62, they noticed a bright satellite-like object with a searchlight on top moving slowly from the northeast. As it passed silently overhead, uh, this is Gordon, I was mm. able to see three lights, one orange and one green, forming a triangle in the sky. Uh, and then as a result of an appeal made in the Strapped by Avon Herald newspaper, by uh, John, John Dennis, he received a letter from, that's from Mr. Gordon Honeycomb, who was then performing at the Royal Shakespeare Theatre. And uh, he, in the letter he said, I, I read in Friday's Herald that you're seeking further reports of a UFO seen last Monday. He said, several of us from the theatre saw it. It would have been about 10.45 p.m. We'd come into the duck for a meal after the shrew and hadn't yet been served. We were, there was about seven of us around the table when Vanessa Redgrave came bursting in, asking us to come outside. There was something in the sky, and they all trooped outside. And she, she said she'd been watching this moving light for about ten minutes. Uh, and then that, that was more or less it. But I tried, uh, like many times, to get in touch with Vanessa Redgrave. Yeah. Uh, um, but, but trying to get in touch with these people is, oh, yeah. Yeah. as we've discussed before, is, yeah. is very difficult. Yeah. Uh, okay. So it would have been nice to have had her version of events. So right. Okay. Interesting story. Vanessa Redgrave. Mm, Vanessa Redgrave. Yeah. All right, then, John. Well, we're going to go for another break and we'll right. dis discuss some more cases after this. Rich Planet TV is sponsored by ShopHolistic.co.uk, bringing you quality detox and natural health products at affordable prices. <laughs> 